with free agency happening so soon, I want to give you guys my top three wide receivers that I think the New York Jets could sign. These are just the three that I picked out. There's obviously more to talk about, but let's start it off with a little bit of a surprise to some people. At number one, and this isn't in any order, but the first receiver that I have is Zay Jones from the Raiders. Now, a lot of you probably remember him when he was on the Bills playing us, but he had a very solid season in Las Vegas last year. He had over 500 receiving yards, and while that may not jump off the page, I did some more research, and he played in less than than 60% of the snaps. So when basically what that tells me is whenever he was on the field, he was making up and showing up on the field. He was making big catches. I, I remember the walk up against the Ravens. Now, is he the best route runner? No, but my main attraction, why I think Zay Jones would be a, actually a pretty good fit with the Jets is because of his ability to win contested catches. I feel like he's very good at catching the ball kind of with his body. And for a quarterback like Zach Wilson, who loves to just rip the ball and fit it in there, and his accuracy, at times, it is not the best. I think Zay Jones could provide a lot of value because not only can A, he can hold on to the balls that Wilson is just zipping to him, but B, even if the ball is maybe not quite on the mark, Zay Jones is really good at making those adjustments and still catching the ball anyways. He's very good at those uh, more tough catches. Now, is he a playmaker with the ball in his hands? Not really. So there is that, but I think we could get Zay Jones relatively cheap at some pretty good value. I looked at Spotrack and the projected salary is like one year uh, under $3 million for him, which I think is a little bit low. So if Joe Douglas were to go sign Zay Jones to a two-year, maybe $10 million deal with about $6 million guaranteed, hell yeah, sign me up for that. I think that's kind of what we wanted Corey Davis to be, that reliable guy who wins those 50-50 contested catches. I think instead it should be Zay Jones. I think he would be a perfect fit uh, in New York with Zach Wilson. The second receiver, if he doesn't get franchise tagged, which this might have just spoiled who it is, but it is Mike Williams from the Chargers. He really burst onto the scene a little bit more last or this past season, uh, especially if you play fantasy. I picked him up pretty early on, but for him as a player, I mean, he was drafted very high. He was the seventh overall pick by the Chargers back in 2017, I think. Uh, at a Clemson and he posted a thousand yard receiving season in 2019 before that too so it's not like this is just like a, a breakout year for him I mean he's already done it before and before that he was still a very reliable receiver obviously Keenan Allen's number one in LA but Mike Williams played very nicely as the wide receiver too and Justin Herbert found a beautiful connection with him this past season that is it, it I just want to see that happen to Zach Wilson and another wide receiver. So why not get Mike Williams in there who's shown that he can build that chemistry and trust with the quarterback that likes to throw the ball deep because Zach Wilson and Justin Herbert, they play very similarly, or at least comparison wise. I mean, obviously Zach Wilson is not um, that he's not Justin Herbert yet, but they play in a similar style and they love the deep ball. So I think Mike Williams could provide a lot of value, uh, a lot of value just kind of stretching the field vertically but he can also run medium routes too. It's not like he just can't run routes and he's only a deep threat. No, he's not a bad route runner. I think he has really good hands. He's good at securing uh, uh, cat balls on the perimeter. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but Mike Williams, he's one of the more expensive guys if he does hit the free agent market. And Spotrek has him getting paid uh, projected around 16.8 million a year. So it's, it's a lot of money. This is a lot of money. Do I think he's a better receiver than Corey Davis though? I definitely think he is, honestly. I think he is, and he definitely has wide receiver one potential. There's a reason he was drafted that high. He's flashed it on film many times. We've all seen it on live TV uh, before. I mean, you go back to that Week 18 game with the Raiders and the Chargers. Mike Williams showed up big time there. So Mike Williams, he just seems to have a knack for these big explosive plays. And that's kind of something we lacked last year, or those huge chunk explosion plays. So Mike Williams would not only be that that true wide receiver one that we need it would also make Corey Davis more effective uh, making him the number two and we'd also have a lot more explosive plays which would definitely help kick start the offense on a lot of drives so I think Mike Williams if he hits the open market would be a great fit in New York too now the third receiver is a controversial figure it's Juju Smith-Schuster from the Pittsburgh Steelers 
listen, we all understand and remember the 2020 TikTok drama with him. But if you go back to last season, he decided to go back to Pittsburgh for one more year to try and add more value so that he could really get paid the bag um, by another team. And what happens? He gets injured in like week one or week two. It doesn't work out. Uh, he does he does fight his way to appear in the playoff game against the Chiefs, which I respect him at least even trying, even though the, the Steelers just had no chance in that game. But we Juju Smith-Schuster is a guy with more untapped potential, I think. I think he, he could definitely revert back to that 20, uh, 2018 season. Um, he has the physical skill sets that we want. He's a big body dude. Uh, he's he has some speed in too. He's he also gets a solid amount of chunk plays down the field to him. And the Jets have been rumored to him before. Last year, I'm pretty sure it was us, the Ravens, and the Steelers that were the three teams Juju was deciding on. I remember hearing the reports that Joe Douglas he loved him and that we we even put in an offer to sign Juju Smith Juju Smith Schuster. So the Jets have shown interest before, and he fits the mold of uh, being a, a, a runner after the catch. He could get those yards after the catch, kind of do more of the work, just have Zach Wilson dump him off the ball, and then Juju can kind of make something happen with his legs. Uh, and even at that, when he's not doing that, he's a, he's a good route runner. I wouldn't say he's great. He's not like a Keenan Allen or anyone, but he's still very competent. And I put him on here because I don't think we'll have to pay him too much considering the season he had last year. And if anything, it might even be another one-year deal. And honestly, I would be perfectly fine with that. Because worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. He's gone next year. We're probably going to either A, draft a, a wide receiver in, in yeah, we're going to draft a wide receiver in free agency. We're going to either draft a wide receiver or we're going to go trade for maybe Amari Cooper or Calvin Ridley as I'm recording this. So worst comes to worst, there's that. Or we could also trade for one next season. But best case scenario, he has a great season, preferably over a thousand yards. And we can either A, extend him or franchise tag him, and he would build some connection with Zach Wilson. Now, is he a, is he a true number one? He could be. He isn't right now, though. He's not right now, but I put him on here because A, we've shown interest in Juju Smith-Schuster before in 2020. We put in an offer for him. And B, he could still get a lot better, and he's had some down years, but we know what his peak can be. His 2018 was fabulous. Uh, even with Antonio Brown being on that team, and that's kind of the excuse, is like, oh, Antonio Brown was the reason why uh, Juju got all those yards. I think that's maybe about half of the story, but Juju still controlled what he could control, and that was his effort and his play on the field, because when he's at his best, and when he puts in the effort, he will put it in, and he will show up, he'll put in results. Now, the off-the-field questions are still a concern to me, because I don't want to be dealing with that stuff. Uh, but if, if if all the boxes check out, Robert Sala and Joe Douglas do a, do a thorough interview and evaluation with Juju, and they understand where his priorities are at, and we find out that the answer is that, yes, he is committed to football, maybe he'll just stop TikTok during the season, then yeah, sign Juju Smith-Schuster. I think it would be a, a, another great value signing that we could do. And I also have a bonus. I have a bonus player, and this is Cordero Patterson. Now, he's a bonus because is he technically a wide receiver or running back? I don't know. He's a wide back like Debo Samuel, but the point is he can he adds a lot of versatility, which I think would make him a fun weapon for Michael Fleur to kind of use, uh, either in the backfield when it's not Michael Carter, or lining up as a receiver. Or we could even ask him to return kicks if we let Barrios if we let Barrios walk. And that's the thing. Cordero Patterson can kind of be our Braxton Barrios replacement. He's a veteran too, which makes him a little bit better now. Is he a better kick returner? He might be. He's won, I think, three All-Pros as a kick returner, so he very well might be a lot better than Braxton Berrios. He's older. He's a better receiver. He's been in the league for longer. He was a first-round pick back in the day, so people saw a lot of good in him, and he'll do anything that we ask him to. I mean, he even wanted to play defense last year on a few snaps. This guy is the definition of a team player, a guy with high character, a guy that players love, and Matt Ryan trusted him a lot, a veteran quarterback. He would check the ball down to him a lot. Zach Wilson, he kind of needs to take some more checkdowns. Why not get Cordero Patterson so he can do that when lining up in the backfield? Or he could line up as a receiver too because he's able to still get separation and play like a wide receiver. So I think Cordero Patterson is kind of that wildcat option. And I didn't even think about this. I didn't even think about the Jets signing Cordero Patterson until I heard it on someone else's stream. But honestly, I'm, I'm very warm to the idea of bringing Cordero Patterson on on a two to three year, maybe like seven to eight million dollar annual contract. Hell yeah, sign me up for that. So that those are my three wide receivers and a wide back, just to have some fun. 
I think the Jets should sign or could sign. Now I didn't add Chris Godwin, and I'll mention I didn't. I. So those are the three wide receivers plus a bonus that I want the Jets to sign, and I'll touch on this real quickly. I don't think the Jets will sign Chris Godwin because he's coming off of a major, major injury. I believe it's an ACL. I mean, even before that, he's missed a, a solid amount of games in his career. I don't think he's played one fully healthy season. Uh, I remember last year he missed three games, and then the year before that he missed two games. And he's coming off of an ACL injury. Does Joe Douglas really want to risk uh, signing a, a an injury-prone player to a mega deal when, we, when something that the Jets have been dealing with is a ton of injuries? Honestly, I don't think so. Maybe next year when we're more realistically at a point where we could go compete for something bigger uh, than just maybe a wild card spot. But right now, I don't think so. So that's why I don't think we're going to sign a Chris Godwin at all. So let me know what you guys think, and I will see you all in the next one.